Welcome back to the AWS Code Deploy course. Today we're going to work on your setup and prerequisites for the rest of this course, including S3 Bucket and GitHub repo setup, which we'll use as our source for our Code Deploy revisions, our IAM instance profile and service role for enabling our instances to execute Code Deploy functions, and for the Code Deploy service role to do deployments. We'll create a web server tier using Windows Server 2012 and IIS using CloudFormation, and then we'll create another similar web server tier using Linux and Apache as our Linux web tier. So to start, let's get our S3 bucket and GitHub repo created. So to begin with, log in to your AWS console, and we'll browse over to the S3 page. And we're gonna create a bucket now remember that S3 bucket names are global in nature. The namespace is global, so this name must be unique. So just for the sake of simplicity, let's just use your name and then code deploy. For region, go ahead and use whatever region is your typical region for this account and hit create. That's it. For code deploy, we don't have to worry about any of the more advanced features of S3. A default bucket with the default permissions will be good enough for our purposes. Okay, now let's set up our GitHub repo as our alternate source for code deploy revisions. So if you don't already have a GitHub account, go ahead and create one and get signed up. Once you have one or if you already have an account, just come to your GitHub page, click on this create new dropdown and hit new repository. For the name, it doesn't really matter, but let's just do github code deploy. And we don't have to worry about name uniqueness since it's going to be underneath your repo account. Description, we can just skip. We'll leave this public because AWS needs to be able to access it. And then we'll go ahead and initialize this repository with a readme. So I'll go ahead and click create repository. Then right away what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this clone URL in the bottom right and copy that. I'm going to pop over to my terminal and I'm going to clone that locally. So I'm just going to clone it locally by executing a git clone and then pasting that HTTPS URL. And it's going to go ahead and create a folder and pull down all the contents, which at this point is just the readme file but we'll populate this later on with a code deploy revision and demonstrate publishing uh, GitHub code deploy revisions to a code deploy deployment. Next, we're gonna create an IAM service role for the code deploy service to use, as well as two instance profiles, uh, one simpler instance profile for our first project, and then a more complex IAM instance profile for our capstone project. We're also going to create an additional IAM user that we can use with our integration with GitHub. And we're going to use that with our continuous deployment project later on in the course. So to start, let's log into our AWS console. We're going to browse to the identity and access management page. Drill into roles and create new role. Now this role name isn't terribly important, but just to make it more human readable, let's call it code deploy service role and hit next step. Now this is one of the gaps that makes creating this role a little bit documentation in AWS. Um, they don't have a service role predefined for code deploy. So for now, we're just gonna choose EC2 and then we'll manually change that in the policy document later on. Now for the policy that we wanna attach, Amazon provides a predefined code deploy role uh, specifically for the code deploy service. So we'll just search for AWS code deploy role. That's the only policy we need to attach, so we'll just select that one and we'll hit next step. Finally, we were presented with this review page just to see all of the attributes we've set up. Everything is correct, so we can just hit create role now. Okay, so now we can see that the code deploy service role has been created. Now let's drill into it and we'll modify it to be related to the code deploy service rather than the EC2 service. 
So you can see here information about the role we just created, including the policy we just attached. And then towards the bottom, you'll see that in this trusted identities box, the identity provider ec2.amazon.aws.com is a trusted party. What this basically says is that we've allowed Amazon's EC2 service to assume this role that we've created. We've extended the rights to assume this role um, to that service itself. Um, for this service role, this is for a code deploy. So what we need to do is modify this trust relationship. We'll remove the EC2 trusted entity and replace it with a code deploy trusted entity. So it's very simple. We're just going to edit the trust relationship. We're going to highlight and delete the ec2.amazon.aws.com. And we're going to paste in the service identifier for code deploy. So one thing to keep in mind is that this is region specific. So for my account, I'm operating in US East 1. And so I'm going to set the service identifier to code deploy.us-east-1.amazonaws.com. That's it. We're going to hit update trust policy. And now you can see the trusted entities includes just code deploy. So Amazon's code deploy service can assume this role we've created and it's going to inherit all the permissions we put in this code deploy role. All right, next up, let's go ahead and create the instance profile. So to start off with, we'll create the simpler one. Before we can create the role, we need to create the policy that we're going to assign to this new instance profile role. So let's drill into policies. And if you've never seen this page before, you get a welcome page. We'll just hit get started. We're going to hit create policy. We're going to do create your own policy. And then for the policy name, we'll just call this simple code deploy instance profile policy. We don't need to fill in the description. The name itself should be pretty self-explanatory. And I'm just going to paste this in. I'll include this text as a resource in the course. Uh, but basically, it's a simple IAM policy saying that uh, whatever object or instance has this policy has the ability to do any git operation, so git star as a wildcard, or any list operation in S3. And we're allowing them to do that on any bucket that they have access to, hence another wildcard. So in your production environments, you'll probably want to strict this to some S3 bucket that's specific to either the application or to just your code deploy resources. But for our example today, this is good enough. So with that, we'll go ahead and just hit create policy. And AWS is going to validate that policy is correct uh, as part of that creation process. So we're all good. Now we have a policy. Now let's go create the simple code deploy instance profile role that's going to use that policy. So I'll hit create new role, call it simple code deploy instance profile. And this is a bit of a redundant name since the, the role itself encompasses an instance profile. So role type is going to be EC2 because we want to enable the EC2 instances that have this role to call these AWS services. And then for our policy, we're going to use the one that we just created. So we'll search for simple, and we find our simple code deploy instance profile policy. Select that and hit next step. Again, we get to our final review page, and we're just going to hit create role. Perfect. All right, let's create one more policy, and this is going to be for our more advanced code deploy. So we'll go back to policies, create policy, select create your own policy. We'll call this advanced code deploy instance profile policy. And here in our policy document, we'll paste in our policy. And I'll include this in the resources section. So let's go over this policy real quick. So again, we're going to have our two S3 actions that we're going to enable. So we're enabling all get and all list commands. We're going to allow access to your code deploy bucket in S3. So mine's going to be Alex D. Glover, but you'll have to fill in your name as appropriate here. And so for this first line, we're specifically calling out the bucket itself. And then the second line where we have the bucket name slash star, we're talking about all contents of that bucket, all child objects or keys. We're also going to include access to all of the code deploy buckets. And that's because if we have a server that doesn't start with the code deploy agent, or if there is an effort to upgrade that agent later, 
that instance is going to need uh, access to those binaries at AWS hosts. Next, we're going to have a few elastic load balancing permissions, and we'll go into this more in detail later when we go over the capstone project, as well as some auto scaling permissions for describing and updating the auto scaling group that the instances are going to be a part of. And we're going to allow that on all load balancers and all auto scaling groups because we're using that wildcard. We're not specifying any specific resources. So finally, we'll hit create policy and it's gonna validate that document for us. And so we're all good. Now that we have our new policy created, let's go ahead and create another role for that for our instance profile. So we'll do create new role, call this one advanced code deploy instance profile and hit next step. Again, we're going to choose EC2 for our service role, and then we're going to look for our policy document so we can attach it. Search for advanced. We found it. So I'll select that one policy and hit next step. Again, we're presented with an opportunity to review everything we just set up. And finally, we're going to hit create role. Perfect. Now we've got all of our service roles and instance profiles created. Let's do one more step together, and we're going to create a new IAM user specifically for GitHub. All right, so we're going to drill into users, create new users, and we only need to create one, so let's just call it GitHub. And we do want to generate an access key for each user, so leave that checked. Next, we'll hit create. And at this point, you're either going to want to download this document with these security credentials or just save it somewhere in a text editor or a document. We're going to use that later on, so definitely get these now, otherwise you're going to have to regenerate these keys later. So I'll just paste that into a text pad locally, and I'll hit close, close again. And then we just want to assign this GitHub user account a specific permission set to do our deployments uh, remotely. It's going to trigger our deployments for us. So we're going to attach a manage policy, and we're going to search for AWS code deploy deployer. This is a predefined role that AWS has created that really fits this use case well. So we're not going to reinvent the wheel. We'll just use their policy. So I select that one, hit attach policy, and that's it. Now we've created this. We can get the access keys and set those up on GitHub to enable continuous deployment and delivery mechanisms.